Sure. I wasn't quite ready. I'm still getting my recording devices together, but hey, <laughs> hi, Dave. Um, <laughs> just your thoughts heading into the weekend. Maybe if you could discuss what you, you're thinking about from a pitching standpoint and just uh, maybe the topical uh, observations about facing Mississippi State. Yeah, just first on uh, the pitching rotation, um, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to let Hunter Holland have a couple more days to rest and we'll either throw him game two or game three, hopefully uh, let that leg continue to rest. And then, so we'll, we'll, we're going to just flip it and we'll start Hagen Smith and, uh, and then we're going to just TBA it for Saturday, Sunday. I mean, obviously there's a really good chance that Tiger gets the ball in one of those games and then we'll just piggyback off of him. We're just not sure which day we want to do it yet. Um, and then as far as Mississippi State, I mean, everyone I talk to, you know, will use the lingo. They're they're better than their record. They're a dangerous team, you know. Uh, so I think that is probably due to, you know, they – things that maybe haven't gone their way, they, they can really hit. Um, and then you throw in the fact that we have, each team has nine games left and, you know, they got to get some, get some wins, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I've tried to teach these guys as they walked in the door that they all count the same. They all mean the same. Uh, wins a wins, a loss is a loss when it when the season's over as far as regular season. And we're just going to go down there and, and do everything we can to win the first game and go from there. Okay. And just um, for, for Hagen, how prepared do you think he is to jump back in there and, you know, be ready to go and try to give you five or six or more? Yeah, he needs to give us at least that many more. He's, he's known for a week that he's going to do this, so – uh, he's had plenty of time to prepare. He's been preparing anyway with his other with his bullpens throughout the season. Um, you know, he's I think he's looking forward to going out there and starting the game. Okay, thanks. Andrew Ellis. Yeah, coach, you know, offensively, it seems like each week you have one or two guys that are hot and then a couple who might not be as hot. Do you think that you guys are due possibly for a week where it just kind of all comes together offensively? Yeah, you know, hitting, it's so hard. Um, pitching so good in the league, stuff so good. It, it's hard to really get them all rolling. But, if you know, if you can get four or five guys in your lineup that have a good weekend, man, you'll be tough to beat because um, runs are hard to get. Now, uh, you never know when you're going to break loose and just have that that weekend where it gels and you got six guys that are getting after it. Just everything's going their way. They're confident, seeing the ball good. But – I know that I don't know if it's going to happen. I know that we would love it. This would be a great weekend with with just all that's gone on, you know, with the injuries and, um, you know, just example, Stovall probably will not play this weekend. I don't even think I'm going to put him on the roster. I'm going to let him rest that shoulder another five or six days. Uh, just, you know, he's not ready yet. So, you know, you're going to have either Holt in there or possibly Cole. Um, you know, so we got to have some guys pick it up. And then just with your bull, bullpen, you know, Gage Woods emergence, how much has that led into the, to the decision to have Hagen start again? Do you feel a lot better about that group of guys who could close the games like, like Wood? Yeah. I mean, Wood's uh, been real consistent really his last probably four or five outings. I think he kind of likes that role finishing the game coming in and, you know, getting maybe six outs or so. Um, he's been good at it. Throws a lot of strikes. He can throw three or four pitches for a strike. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely helps uh, saying, okay, uh, you know, we're not going to pitch Holland game one. And, you know, the way we've been running is bringing Smith off of him if we were probably tied or winning. Uh, now you're going to go with the, the person who's been kind of semi-closing for you to start. So you got to have – somebody take that role and and I would say he's he's the main guy and I think he likes it. We we do have a lot of confidence in him. Hodge. Dave with Holland, do you feel confident that you will pitch him at some point this weekend or is there still possible that you give him the the weekend off? Um I feel like that we will pitch him uh but I mean that's always a possibility but 
you know, he's he's been doing what he's supposed to do to get in, get ready to pitch and start a game as far as, you know, is uh, working on the mound and throwing his bullpen and pretty much everything he can do. And, you know, he's he's healthy, except, he's, you know, he's got a leg that's been bothering him and a, it seems to be getting better. So uh, we feel like as of today, you know, that he's he's going to get on the mound in, in Starkville. And Dylan Carter shared the news yesterday about his UCL injury. Just what was your reaction to that? And how do you uh, expect to maybe replace those innings that he was giving you? Well, my reaction was, I wouldn't say it was shock, but after the first MRI, the Friday before the Monday that he had the second one done was clean. And even the doctors were, they felt good. And they thought, they just thought, well, we'll do the dye just to double check. And, and then it came back at, with the, with a tear it was kind of shocking actually and just disappointed it felt bad for him you know I found out like at 4 30 in the afternoon I gave him a call I think we'd all individually called him to see how he was doing and talk to him a little bit but yeah I mean you don't replace him really um you know when he was rolling along there he was pitching at 90-93 and throwing a slider for a strike and pitching some real tough leverage situations um uh, you know, we got to have some guys pick it up. We've had a couple guys in the bullpen that, you know, haven't done well lately and, and they have good arms and it's, it's time to get it going again. Bob. Yeah, Dave, when you say that the last, you talk, you talk about um, by, by being Fouch, I assume, or who would you mean by that? Yeah, those are a couple of them. I mean, they, they've got to, they've got to get, get some outs for us. Um, I feel like the other day, honestly, Fouch, uh, looking back at, we'll just call it track, man. He got hosed a couple pitches into the first hitter. They were in the strike zone. And for a kid that needs a little bit of a break or some confidence, I mean, I could tell that those pitches, I mean, the way our catcher was acting, the way our pitcher's acting, then you go back and look at him. I think he missed two of them. Uh, on the first hitter that should have been strikes and it, and he's he was a little fragile out there and uh you know so we've told him hey we we have confidence in you and you just keep you keep getting after it and we're going to give you the ball and you know go back to thinking that you're good because you are and uh you know Bybee he just tiptoeing around the strike zone too much you know just missing just needs to go out there and compete, not worry about getting hit. Just throw the ball over the plate and let him hit it, and we'll field it. And there's actually a qu question Nate was wanting us to ask you. Um, I guess, well, what are the benefits looking ahead to not having any more of these midweek games, getting ready for the other conference series after this one? You know, you're, you're done with the midweek games. What, Especially with all the injuries, what, what are the benefits of that? Well, I mean, that's part of it. With all the injuries, um, it gives us an opportunity more than anything to – uh, rest our relievers and get them where they might be able to throw twice on the weekend if we need them to a little here and there. But, uh, you know, also next week, not having a game, getting ready for finals, playing a weekend series, not having a game the next week, uh, finishing up their finals. And then after that, you know, we're finishing the regular season. So, I think it's kind of a mental break for him. You know, you, you get you get worn out a little bit mentally with all the all that goes on in, in college baseball with the travel and the number of games and you know the stress of the weekends and then you throw the injuries on top of it. Um, you know, we usually don't. I usually don't have any games at this time of the year. I mean, it's not like this is a new thing. Uh, we we haven't scheduled these two weeks for a while. I see you probably saw the news this morning. Alabama fired Brad Bohan. And I wonder what your thoughts and reaction is to that news. Don't really know what happened. Don't know all the details. I really like Brad. I don't know what, uh, you know, what's going on there. I'm sure we'll find out more throughout the day in the next few days. But I feel bad for, you know, the, the players on the team. Feel bad for the coaches and fans. It's, you know, I. I don't know what went on. I don't. I guess they've got they've got something to be able to 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 make that move pretty quick. So, just a bad setup, bad situation. Thanks, Tom. 
Speaking of firings, um, Chris Lamonis let go their pitching coach, uh, Fox Hall, this week. And I, I don't know if directly relates to how things might change, but any thoughts on uh, maybe their pitchers being a little more rejuvenated or whatever from that? You know, I have no idea um, how that will affect the team. I mean, you have to be in that locker room to know that. Um, I don't know if, you know, if the players are upset about it or happy about it or a little bit of both. I mean, you just never know. And I'm sure they'll they'll try to rally the troops and they know what's up against them and, and just try to, you know, to try to get some wins. I mean, that's the situation we're all in. But the teams that, you know, are down there, heading nine games left, you got six, five, six, seven wins, you know, they're, they're all fighting to get into the, the SEC tournament, not, not the NCAA tournament yet, but the, so they, they want to have a chance to get to that tournament that, you know, those teams are going to, they're going to fight you pretty good. We know that. Okay. Thanks. Hodge. Yeah, Dave, I know, I know some of them are bad luck, like, you know, Wagner breaking his thumb, sliding into the bag and, stuff like that, but with so many significant and even lingering injuries this year, is have you been able to put a, a, figure out a common thread or reason behind so many injuries this year more than years past? I just think it's just kind of the luck of the draw. I mean, it's the same schedule, same just about everything, honestly. Um, and, you know, the injuries are, you know, you look at it, it's, for the most part, it's been older pitchers. Guys have thrown a lot. I mean, Big time summer ball last summer for Dylan, then fall ball, and um, it just it starts to add up, you know. Some, I, I would say, just about every pitcher that's been playing ball and is a is a guy that pitches a lot. Um, the elbow injury is is just around the corner. I mean, it's just a matter of time. I mean, did you guys know Hagen Smith had Tommy John was a junior in high school? I mean, uh, it's. You look in the big leagues too. It's it's the same way, you know. The other injuries are just, you know, on the position players. They're just injuries that happen: hamstrings and sore shoulders, tendonitis. It's the way it is. I was going to ask you about the the Tommy John, like a broad picture. I mean, I guess you know Hunter Elliott at Ole Miss and, and Garrett Edwards at LSU both came out this week that they need it as well. Is do you know why? I mean, is it just a matter of overuse at younger ages, or do you have any? Big picture thoughts on why that may be? Well, you know, I I don't think you can point your finger to one thing unless, you know, as a young person, somebody's just been abused. You know, when a guy gets into college and they're they're managed pretty good by trainers, coaches, strength and conditioning coaches. I mean, they're probably in the best shape of their life. Um, I just think throwing a baseball overhand is some serious stress on an arm and you know we've we've had our center field we've had two center fielders had tommy john you know over the years so just take it in and out and bingo pops so uh when you're playing a sport there's always danger of getting hurt you know we hate it uh in a perfect world i wish we started the season later we could get have a little more time and to get these pitchers right before we open the season. Um, I think that has a little bit to do with it as well. Robert. Yeah, well, with uh, with Stovall, I'm wondering is is there a more specific label to? I know you said it's a banged up shoulder, but is there is there something more specific you can call it? And then is there, is there any concern that he might be out longer than this weekend? Well, there's always concern on that. I mean, really, the only thing I can tell you is it's inflammation which means basically tendonitis and then it's, it's bothering because we've got to get that inflammation to calm down, go away a little bit. And, uh, you know, they're, they're working hard to get that taken care of. All right, coach. Thanks for the time. Okay. We'll see you guys.